Google net for those of you new. And since it's September, I was kind of thinking about some soups and everything. Um, I've got some coffee here that is at this point probably lukewarm due to the fact that I have an almost eight month old. <laughs> But I will drink some of it in a little bit. Anyway, Florida doesn't necessarily feel like fall, uh, sadly, because I do love fall. Fall is, well, okay, what I consider fall is to be like chilly mornings and evenings and you can wear warm, cozy sweaters and white pumpkins and, you know, lattes and things like that. Um, and I can do all of that if I really want to, but Florida doesn't necessarily have the chilly uh, atmosphere going on yet. Ours is, I guess we'll just say it's later in the year. So I kind of have to pretend a little bit on my end, but I know that a lot of you guys are seeing the change of the seasons. So I thought it'd be fun to share some soup recipes with you. If you're new, I live in Sarasota, Florida. My name is Lynette Yoder and I enjoy sharing recipes with you guys and doing lots of decorating, renovating, that kind of thing. So I hope you stick around, hit the subscribe button. I would love that. I'm gonna get right into the video and kind of take you along as I make these different soups. So the first one is gonna be a cheesy chicken chowder soup, which is super yummy. Uh, these are the ingredients I'm gonna be using, plus maybe a couple different spices. Uh, but I've got some milk, some vegetables, potatoes, chicken, Velveeta, flour, chicken broth, uh, different things like that. So I'm gonna get started and I'll have the recipe written out in my description box as well as giving you instructions while I'm making it. So I'm gonna start by cooking my chicken in a little bit of water and I'm gonna let that cook while I chop up the veggies. So in case you're thinking that, oh my, this is gonna be a lot of chopping and these recipes are gonna be complicated, not to worry. The first recipe for this chicken chowder soup is the most chopping that you're gonna have to do. There is a little bit of veggies that you're gonna need to chop up, but I promise you it'll be worth it in the end. This is probably one of my favorites from all three recipes that I'm doing. It's just so yummy. Once all your veggies are cut up and potatoes are chopped, you can then add your broth and everything and simmer this for a little while. These are almost ready to be drained and then I'm going to save the broth and I'll add the vegetables to the rest of the soup later on. By the way, I get a lot of questions as to where this Dutch oven is from. It is from Target. My sister got it for me last year at Christmas and I love it. I think this next step is called a roux. Is that the proper term? I could be wrong, but anyway, I did add onion to it as the recipe called for but you're gonna melt your butter and saute the onion and then you're gonna add in the flour, stir it around and that becomes smooth and then you're able to add your leftover hot broth as well as I added half and half and regular milk to equal the amount that you need in your recipe. If you don't have half and half, it's not a big deal. You can just use regular milk or I guess if you'd wanna do heavy cream, a part of it, you could. You don't wanna use all of it. Um, but at least a little bit so that's going to make your um, cheese part or like your soup base even richer if you do use like half and half or something. So I was using something similar to Velveeta, not the exact Velveeta brand, but then you just put that in there, let it melt, and you stir it until it's all nice and smooth, and then you're gonna add everything together, and you're ready to eat it. So 
So I'm dishing it out here, but I also wanted to say that I fried some bacon to add to it. I just thought that it would be really, really good to have bacon on top, as well as I cut up some green onions and that just made it even better. And then we typically either eat it just plain like this or we'll add crackers to it. So I really hope you enjoy this recipe. So I'm making a white chicken chili soup. I'm using the boneless, skinless chicken tenderloins. Is that what they're called? I think so. Um, but you could use uh, chicken breast or whatever chicken you prefer. So these are the spices that I'm going to be using. Um, the cayenne pepper, only a little bit. I mean, obviously just use according to your taste. If you like more spice, definitely put more in. Thought I would talk a little bit about this stuff. I'm using the Walnut Creek Foods brand chicken broth. I'm using it in the other soup as well. But I want to say they are sponsoring the video today and I'm very grateful. I don't have a ton of products to show you today from their brand, but I've been talking about them for a while now. They are based in Holmes County, uh, the heart of Amish country, and they have a big like manufacturing plant as well as a couple stores up there, but they ship a lot of their products to stores all across the US basically. And I have been so interested in hearing from you guys that you have found their brand, maybe in a store that you didn't realize or at a bulk food store. I always like to recommend their stuff because I know that it comes from a reputable source. They try to manufacture as many products themselves as they can. And they also sell lots of like deli meats and cheeses and I have bought a lot of their stuff over the years. And if you ever go into like deli sections in even like little gas stations or something check out their where their meat comes from i'd be so curious to know if you find it you know and you didn't even realize it they're just a great company to support also for you locals here in sarasota that wilder's farm market has started carrying their brand some more so if you didn't realize that you can look for their stuff in their stores so that means i'll have some more access to it and everything so i am simmering this broth. I think I'm gonna add some more beans to it. Um, the garlic smells so good, but if you don't like garlic, you know, completely eliminated, I guess, a little bit would be good. Um, and then you can also add some onion to it, to it like I did, um, and then you kind of saute it. You could turn this into a crock pot meal if you'd want it. And then I can just kind of let it simmer, and at the end you will add like your heavy cream and everything, and I'll show you kind of how we eat it. So typical me, just realized that I don't have the mozzarella shredded cheese on hand. I'm out of it and the only thing I have is marble. <laughs> Uh, but the cheese is totally optional. Um, you, I think we usually put in mozzarella, um, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, but just so you know, 
Usually I think we'd go ahead and use uh, like mozzarella or like maybe a provolone or something, like a white type of cheese. So that's it. You can always add more tortilla chips if you want, but basically at the end, you could either add your heavy cream in the whole pot, if you know that you're gonna eat it all, and then you can add a little bit of sour cream, some tortilla chips, and I put a little uh, green onion on kind of for garnish, but they also taste good, and then your cheese, of course. So that is how we eat our creamy white chicken chili, and I hope you really love this recipe if you've never tried it. So my last recipe is gonna be a classic chili soup. I don't know about you, but I like my chili soup just a little bit sweet. Um, and I don't know, is that common everywhere? I don't know if that's just part of our culture growing up. Um, but in any case, I love chili soup and I am gonna show you how we eat it. There's actually a couple different ways you could eat it. You can kind of treat it as like a taco soup with toppings or you could just eat it your plain chili soup with crackers so that'll be up to you um, i'm gonna start by frying some hamburger and onion together and as usual i'll have the recipe in the description box so maybe this is a normal thing that everyone does but it's something my mom always did a lot of times she was not either necessarily very much the type to plan ahead and so, you know, inevitably hamburger would be frozen solid and she still used it. Like you just put it in your frying pan and you just kind of let it cook a little bit, then you scrape off what's already cooked, you flip it over, like the inside just continues to kind of get smaller and smaller, the frozen part, and so you can just kind of like scrape off the part that's already cooked. So even if you have frozen hamburger, you can still use it. You don't need to completely thaw it before you actually, you know, want to use it. So it's not the most ideal way, but it does work. Also, a side note, in the past I have canned chili soup before, uh, and mom would have done that growing up too, especially if we had like a lot of tomatoes that we grew, like in the garden and stuff. That was one thing that she usually had, and so then you could make like tomato juice out of it, things like that. And we often made chili soup, put them in like quart jars, and then it's like, all you need to do is heat it up, which is so handy. I wish I would do it, I just haven't done it in a while. Um, and yeah, but that's something that's really nice if you do have the time to make like a super big batch of it. Um, it just takes a little bit of time, but it is always handy to have. So after the ground beef and the onion are done, you can then add some flour to it again and that will act as a thickener and you know you won't have to be dealing with lumps or pouring in you know like milk and flour and stuff. It just makes it really easy. So then you're ready to just add in your liquids and your spices. And then this is where the sweetness comes in. Just a little bit of brown sugar. I'm gonna rinse the kidney beans. As far as like the chili powder, you can totally like just kind of add to your taste however spicy you want it. Uh, you could do that or add some chili seasoning, which I don't have. Um, so I'm just kind of, you know, going by how I think it tastes and how I like it. But it's so easy to make and it's so good. It just, it just reminds me of fall. So I'm almost ready to get this out and dish it in a bowl and have some. All right, so like I said, you could eat this with just crackers or you could add in tortilla chips, sour cream, and cheese, sort of like the white chicken chili soup, um, but it'll just be a little bit more like a taco soup, which is typically, I think, what Nick and the boys like. The boys aren't big soup people anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm guessing they would put in some cheese and uh, sour cream and stuff, so. Okay guys, that's it. That is three different soup recipes for you that I hope you will enjoy and that you can maybe use throughout the fall season or winter even. Uh, and I just hope you really enjoy them. I know that I don't make soup often enough just because it tends to feel like it's a winter thing um, and we live in a warm climate. And so I don't make them as often as I used to. And I think I need to do a little bit better at it. So 
this has been good eating some soup again and yeah i just hope you guys enjoy it if you're new hit the subscribe button you know what to do all right guys i will see you in my next one bye <laughs>